In today's video, we're going to be going over the current conditions, breaking down some of that tropical activity. There is a golf system we need to watch and also some severe weather. Let's just get straight into this video though. And first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery. And from sea to shining sea here, we have activity really. I mean, you can tell that almost every single state is seeing something going on at this point. Uh, let's just zoom into the Northwestern United States. First things first, it's too much to even just take a look at overall uh, we just got to zoom in here we can see for northern california and through washington nevada idaho we have this pocket of showers and some heavier pockets are about to be around here for this region here we can see they're just offshore those areas are going to be much heavier yellows and oranges popping up there on the radar so keep a lookout for that and even in the surrounding regions we do have some light but scattered showers around for the rockies the cascades up here as well uh, so for the entire northwestern corner of the nation, there is a lot of activity ongoing this morning and expected to continue on uh, later today. Now, as we move towards the north central United States, we can see that there is a bit more interesting activity going on for this region. Uh, there is just, again, showers scattered about, but we do have this pocket of thunderstorms, even severe thunderstorms there in Nebraska going on so we're going to be watching for all of that there is a lot of severe weather expected throughout the day today and even the upcoming days so we're going to touch on that later on but uh, throughout the day today this region is expecting potential severe weather and many other regions actually we have widespread severe weather um, widespread lower risk severe weather but it is going to be for a more wide region if that makes sense so we're not expecting a high chance of severe weather it's going to be quite you know low to medium chance but that region is going to be quite large that is expecting the severe weather. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. I guess we do have some activity down here for the southwest. Uh, just some isolated rain showers, just pockets of rainfall ongoing at this point. Uh, so that's definitely worth noting. Let's move further south and east here. We do have some of this showery activity moving off of the gulf into the kind of armpit of Florida here. That's what I call it. Uh, you might have heard of the armpit of Africa. This is kind of the armpit of Florida here, uh, right in between the Panhandle and the main region of Florida there. Uh, they are seeing some of those showers and isolated thunderstorms move onshore at this point. It's also worth noting that there is some showers and thunderstorms very close to the Carolina coast here. And I think at times we've seen some of these isolated thunderstorms impacting South Carolina at least. And I would not be surprised, especially if the Outer Banks here or some of these regions in coastal North Carolina saw some sort of activity as well. Uh, and as we move further north, we could tell that for the Ohio Valley and through the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, there is just this pocket of showers and thunderstorms kind of billowing up. And this is a region that we are expecting quite a bit of severe weather later today. Uh, there's already showers and thunderstorms in the area. So if those continue, that could bring down the chance of seeing severe weather later. Uh, but only time will really be able to tell. But there is already rainfall happening right now. I can tell you from Virginia. The rainfall lately has been lacking, and I've had to water my grass like crazy. Uh, it's starting to turn yellow, obviously way below average precipitation. So I'm hoping for some rain at my house. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I really need some rain for not only my garden, actually, but my yard for sure. Uh, we do see that up here in the northeast, there is a pocket of showers there over basically Toronto and surrounding regions here of uh, Canada. These are kind of moving eastward, so these will make their way generally into the northeastern United States. So we can expect rainfall later on there for the northeast, an area where there actually has been quite a bit of precipitation up there to the north. All right, so that should be about it. There's obviously a lot going on here, so I might have missed something, but what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the upcoming pattern. And then we're going to break down some of those tropical threats, and then we're going to take a look at that severe weather as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at the overall upcoming pattern. As we work our way towards later today on Sunday, June 12th, we can literally see where the jet stream is. We've been talking about this for a couple of days, but the precipitation follows it in this case. Um, we can see lots of storminess here in the northwest. We saw that a minute ago. Also up here in the northeastern and Ohio Valley regions of the United States. Also the southeast, so along that jet stream is where we're seeing that general storminess. Uh, just to give you guys a sneak peek at the temperature pattern, we are experiencing uh, slightly cooler weather in the eastern United States. Warmer temperatures here for the central regions of the United States, where we see a big ridge taking place there, and some cooler temperatures with that storminess there in the northwest as well. 
Now that's just for later today. For by the time we're reaching tomorrow afternoon, Monday, we see some storminess in these regions in here in the southeast corner. Also a pretty wintry storm up there in the northwest. We see some snowfall here for the Rockies, the Cascades here as well. Very late, late season snowstorm expected as we basically get this type of a setup, a 990 millibar low pressure center, a deeper trough here in the northwest ridge just to the east of it, and we're seeing something like this. So this dramatic trough with the cold air working its way really far south here is what's allowing for this to take place. And also this ridge just to the east, when we see this taking place, a lot of the cold that would normally be in this region of Canada is displacing there, because obviously since there's a ridge in place, it has to go somewhere else. So a lot of it is making its way tunneling down into that trough, and that's why we're getting even further below normal temperatures for that region with that dramatic ridge just to the east, and that's allowing for even colder air to make its way down. I think all of these factors is what is kind of just allowing this snowstorm to even take place. Um, we do see that there is a secondary low to the north as well. I think the stronger of the two is this one down here, though. Uh, so there's a lot of low pressure in the area, and overall we get a wintry storm from that. We will take a look at the total snowfall pretty soon here. We do see some storminess still around, again, like I said, for the eastern United States, but this is going to be more scattered, obviously not wintry. Uh, by the time we reach Tuesday, uh, we do get some storminess here in the southeast, but generally we are quieting down here in the east. That snowstorm is still going on here. Um, we see something like this with the jet stream, I would say, uh, with the low right here, and we're seeing a lot of warm air make its way further north and even curving back to the west. And again, this is just allowing for all of that cold air to tunnel in to the northwest here. We see lots of snowfall uh, here for the Rockies, still taking place with this 990 millibar low pressure center right there, also 995 to the east, like I mentioned. And here for the eastern United States, some leftover storminess. By the time we reach Wednesday, that low pulls up. We see a 984, though, so it's getting stronger, but it's mostly a, a Canadian low at this point. Mostly just... Um, Rainfall, obviously, for these non-mountainous regions. Uh, we do see that this low right here has a bit of a cold front stretching underneath, and this is allowing for some storminess there in the kind of upper Midwest region. I would anticipate that for Wednesday, June 15th, severe weather will be possible. We also have some uh, potential thunderstorms popping up here in the Mid-Atlantic and Southeast there on June 15th. For Wednesday, June 16th, we see the 989 millibar low pressure center with a strong uh, cold front underneath here brings storminess for the entire eastern United States. Again, Thursday, June 16th there. Friday, June 17th, uh, that moves through. We see some leftover storminess, but generally the jet stream now looks like this. So we get a bit of a trough in the east here. So we're going to see some cooler temperatures return by the time we're reaching late next week. Just like this, warmest temperatures will actually be where that snowstorm was taking place around the Rockies and a little bit of the plains potentially here. Uh, some cold air making its way down the west coast. This is going to kind of push everything further eastward there. So by the time I reach even Saturday afternoon, this is the look. Sunday afternoon, uh, we see that the ridge has moved further eastward. So we see something like this with the jet stream. Bit of a pretty deep trough there in the east actually. So could experience some far below normal temperatures there. Uh, warmer temperatures here, and again, cold for the west. So we're seeing this all over the place, kind of like a roller coaster. By the time we reach Sunday, it's clear that the ridge is moving further eastward. So we see still a trough for the northeast, but this ridge is moving through. And it will eventually push through where we kind of reach a point where it's like this. So we see most of the cooler air up here. And there is warmer air moving into the east, just like this. So we are seeing that eventually towards the end here of the model run. Now quickly, here's the 10-day total precipitation. If you're anywhere in the white, you're expecting practically no precipitation. Grays will be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch of precipitation. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch of precipitation. Yellows will be an inch to two inches. Reds will be two to five inches. Uh, and that's kind of what we're left with here. If you're anywhere in the grays or browns there, which would basically be Mexico or Canada is the only two areas I see that. That would be at 5 to 10 inches of precipitation, which would be pretty elevated, obviously. For total snowfall, obviously we have that snowstorm I was talking about. We expect about a dusting, if anything, there in the grays. The blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. The purples will be 6 to 10. And then your pinks there will be about 10 to 20. Uh, and that's just what we're expecting from this snowstorm. And then once that's said and done, we're going to have to see what we're left with here on the total snowfall map. But I'm expecting, well, much less. 
Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern and then we're going to finally talk about the tropics a little bit where there is a Caribbean disturbance expected and pretty soon actually and then we're just going to break down the severe weather. Now here's the temperature pattern. I just want to move towards this afternoon uh, and kind of what we see is some cooler air already making its way into uh, the western United States here setting up for that snowstorm that is going to get even more dramatic. The warmest temperatures are going to be here for the central United States, although pretty neutral temperatures will be around for the east. And even by the time we reach about tomorrow afternoon, it's going to become clear that we actually have more warmer temperatures here. So for the entire eastern half or two thirds of the country, we really have a ridge ongoing at this point. So expect hot conditions way colder here. Uh, where again, all this air up here that's now warmer than normal has kind of displaced and pushed down into the western United States where that snowstorm has taken place. So it took a lot to make that happen, but it happened. Um, we're kind of left with the same thing here for Tuesday. Mostly a trough there in the west, ridge here in the east as you can see. Wednesday, still going to be kind of like that. Uh, we see this trough is really lifting off, and this is going to allow for this ridge to really subside here. Uh, that's what we're going to see. So for Friday... Uh, we actually see the warm air mostly heading towards the west and some cooler air heading towards the east. So we're kind of flip-flopping here with the pattern. Saturday uh, is clearly a dramatic jet stream day, in my opinion. I uh, definitely have something going on like this, which looks more like a wintertime temperature anomaly map more than a, you know, summertime. Just really, really odd stuff here. Sunday, same thing. I mean, trough here, ridge here, trough here. <laughs> It's crazy, guys. This is actually pretty dramatic. Usually you see these things flatten out this time of year, uh, but we're getting a little bit more dramatic. Now, by the time we're reaching early, early, early into next week, and I mean like 20th, this is Monday the 20th here we're taking a look at, so very far from now, uh, we finally kind of subside where it looks like um, maybe a little bit of jet stream movement, but not quite as much there. Uh, and we're left, off, we're left off kind of with something like this where there's some pockets of below normal temperatures, certainly, but there's also mostly areas of warmer temperatures here, and there's no dramatic troughs or ridges going on. It's just going to be cooler for some of the stormier areas and warmer for some of the sunnier areas, kind of return to how things usually should be. Now, here's some of that tropical activity. Let's just break it down. We're going to start with the European model. The area I want you to watch this is by the time we're reaching Tuesday into Wednesday, okay? This Tuesday into Wednesday, 14th, 15th time frame, just a few days from now. Watch this pocket here, kind of near Central America. We're going to watch a disturbance move up kind of like this, and they have it doing this as of now, uh, but this really, it could do anything, but they really do develop it. We see this is our cyclonic relative vorticity. This shows a large-scale rotation in the atmosphere. Um, so we see that this really gets going here, right here and it makes its way across i'm going to draw the line north of where it's going to be so you can watch it still it's going to be just to the south of that but we watch it develop and the reds and the purples is indicating um, stronger areas of large scale rotation in the atmosphere so we are seeing a potential tropical cyclone there uh, developing on thursday the 16th mostly but i mean it starts out really tuesday wednesday time frame but thursday it really gets going here's by saturday uh, and then Monday, so we're looking at something that's going to be tracking for multiple days across Central America into potentially Mexico eventually. Uh, definitely needs to be watched here. Now let's compare here. Here's the GFS model. And I mean, we really get the same thing here. Wednesday really gets going there, as you can see. Um, and it goes much further north on this model as well, which allows it to develop even more. Friday, the 17th there, crosses through kind of the Cancun, uh, Cozumel area there. Um, and then we see that this moves into the Gulf of Mexico by Sunday, June uh, 19th here as a very strong tropical disturbance or tropical cyclone there and then moves back into Mexico. So they both take overall this track with it, or not even that far north. They both kind of take a track like this uh, that tracks over land a lot, and it does not appear to cross north of this line, which would make it a U.S. threat as of now, but... Honestly, the back end of this track is pretty far out, so we're still going to pay attention to it because obviously, as easily as the model is showing this, it could start to show something more like this. Um, or sometimes a common track would be this, this time of year, if it meets up with the jet stream. Um, so we need to watch this. It is a, potent a potentially, uh, obviously, a U.S. threat, so 
We're going to watch it closely here. I'm going to be checking on with it daily. So tune in with us daily because I will be paying attention uh, and updating you guys with everything uh, that I learn about this system as the models continue to show it or not show it. I will let you guys know. Now, what we're going to do here is move on and take a look here at the severe weather. Now, here's the day one categorical outlook. This is what I meant when I said we were expecting widespread severe weather today. Really a lot of different folks expecting severe weather. Um, we have First off, a very large general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green. And that's where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory. The darker green region there, that's going to be our marginal risk of severe weather, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. The three yellow regions there, which we have three of them, which is pretty odd, is our slight risk regions. And that's where we expect scattered severe weather to take place throughout the day today. So we have three different regions expecting um, pretty elevated chance of severe weather. So again, multiple different states, multiple different um, areas there expecting uh, pretty decent severe weather chances today. So everybody be safe today on Sunday, June 12th. Tomorrow uh, is looking kind of similar. We have two general thunderstorm risks there in lighter green areas. Again, where we expect general thunderstorms. But again, heed every watch, warning, and advisory, please, folks, because anything is possible. The darker green region there, though, will be our marginal risk of severe weather where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. And then the two yellow regions there is our slight risk areas of severe weather, uh, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to take place. For day three here, we have two general thunderstorm risks again. We have two marginal risks there, one there for the mid-Atlantic and southeast, and then one up there for the upper Midwest. And then we have one slight risk in between North Dakota and Minnesota there, very far north here on Tuesday, June 14th. And then for day four, we actually have an extended day, extended day outlook here for Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, where we expect at least a slight risk there in that yellow region for Wednesday, June 15th. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we obviously have this tropical system to track now, but we're at a four out of six. Obviously, once confidence increases for that system, we will probably move up to a five out of six, but we're still waiting on that, obviously, and we probably will be for a couple of days now. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lilith Bay, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotola, Sakapai, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas Carries, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Van, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.